Hey, everybody. Hello. Howdy. <laughs> Welcome to S Plus Marketing Live. We are so excited Whoop. to be here with you this week. We love our, our S Plus Marketing episodes. We get to hang out with you guys, which is super fun. Uh, we get to hang out with each other. I mean, what's not to love? It's this almost week, Friday. You it's know, almost it's all Friday. great. <laughs> all great. <laughs> Thursday night is like the, it's like pre-Friday. Um, this week right. we are talking about website personalities. This is a topic Ooh. that we feel really passionately about um, and we're actually doing a ton of writing about it and that kind of stuff. So we thought let's do an episode about it and just kind of dig deep and talk about it in detail. So and what's a website personality? You'll have to find out. That's right. Wait and see. This is S Plus Marketing Live. We're here to help you be and feel smarter about what's happening in the marketing world right now. What is S Plus Marketing? Gee, thanks for asking. <laughs> it's marketing based on the ultimate human technology story. Stories. I got it this time. <laughs> well done, Jim. After After 50 episodes, I finally <laughs> got it. <laughs> Not quite a 50 episodes, might be a 30. <laughs> um, so our team is here from Story Collaborative. Unfortunately, we're missing Jennifer Bailey, but we're going to have a little, uh, a little, she's going to be coming up in a little bit to tell you something from her vacation. So that's exciting. Um, we are a group of growth marketing consultants. While we do our introductions, if you guys could start a watch party, if this is on Facebook, we also do live on YouTube. So you never, never know, but uh, Facebook, watch party would be awesome. You can simply do that by clicking share and then start a watch party. Very easy to do from the Facebook app. Very difficult to do from desktop. If you figure it out, let us know. <laughs> Dave, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Dave. I'm, I'm Dave Mills. <laughs> I'm the chief growth officer here at Story Collaborative and my role is to find the low-hanging fruit with all the customers that we work with to help them to speed forward in their growth. And we're passionate about that. We're passionate about connecting with your mission and your growth plan. And we want to find those leverage points where you can uh, accelerate your growth. Chad, go for it. Awesome. Well, I am Chad Alexander and I am the video strategist of Story Collaborative. And I help uh, people figure out their, their why of their video and then translating that into production and um, getting it out on the web where it should be consumed the most um, or however we want to convert with video. And today's sponsor is actually legitimate. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty awesome that we actually have a sponsor today. So this is Kuliana Coffee and it is very, very, ah, oh, whoa! <laughs> I didn't even, this was unplanned, guys. Um, yeah, so, so, uh, very good coffee. And, um, Ryan, the owner of, of Kuliana, he actually roasts his own beans. Um, if you guys haunt our Facebook channel, you saw that we've, um, did a live maybe a year or so ago, um, showing the process of him actually, uh, Cooking the beans? I, I don't know the terms, guys. Roasting. I just enjoy roasting. roasting. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, wow. Terrible, terrible sponsorship right now. Uh <laughs> Listen, Ryan is all about sustainability. And so um, mm. other than the fact that it's the best coffee I've ever had, also, I love Delicious. his mission. Um, and he also has direct trade with some people, um, you know, in other countries. I couldn't tell you which one's South America, I assume. But anyway, all that to say, great job. That's some good coffee, and and so he, if you're in, if you're in our region, Central Virginia, he delivers. Um, otherwise, this is good enough to have it shipped anywhere. I'd ship this to the moon uh, if I was there. It's delicious, uh, because it's so good. I just got my delivery, um, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad to have some Kuliana coffee in the house again. And I just want to clarify, he is not actually sponsoring us. We just really like his coffee, <laughs> and we thrive on coffee. Is the thing, um, and so we're just doing a little shout out for Ryan. Yeah, yeah I've got another noted. sponsor. I have another sponsor. Um, Ooh, you know, cool. during, during this epidemic, pandemic, whatever we want to call it, um, this this sound has been heard by many many people. See if you can recognize it from your video meetings. <laughs> is it Did you hear? recorded dog barks? It's a dog. <laughs> And the reason that's our other sponsor for the day is that so many people have had 
business meetings, you know, it used to be that the epic fail was the newscaster having his children come in and fly airplanes while he's <laughs> on the green screen. But now everyone's got dogs barking and everyone's got children playing in the background. So it's become normal. Anyway, dogs, dogs barking is our other sponsor. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, dogs. Thank you, dogs everywhere. Uh, I'm Amy Alexander. I'm our creative director. My goal and my role is to make sure that our brand and your brand, when someone answers the phone, your receptionist, all the way to your colors and your logo and everything in between, that the whole brand feels unified and it's telling the same story. And it's super fun. All right, so today we're gonna talk about website personalities. Now, we don't often think of our websites as having a personality, but the truth is that someone's very early impression of your brand is often your website. And make no mistake that consumers uh, absolutely feel something when they meet your website for the first time. And so that is a really good case to make. It kind of has the personality. It's like a person, just like a brand has personality. So does a website. So what does that mean for you? Let's talk about it. Our first segment is always repeat after me. Dave, what do you say when a client says that your website is intimidating? Now, not our website, but you. What would someone say if, if one of their clients said that their website was intimidating? Yeah, so uh, this, is, this is one of the um, conditions or the personalities that we've identified in our, our personal, website personality quiz, which Amy will give the link for. Um, and it is actually the intimidating website personality. Um, and it's really important to understand that some people really do feel intimidated when they come to a website. And if, if, someone, if a client tells you that, you that your website's intimidating, first of all, what you should say is thank you. Thank you for telling me because client feedback about websites is invaluable. But then it's important to go a little bit deeper and find out what about the website is intimidating. Um, is it using such uh, such antiquated technology that they can't figure out how to click through? Is it is it uh, too jargony where it has all kinds of terms they don't understand? Is it scary because it's got pictures of scary things on it like medical procedures? Um, is it uh, is it just so dark and dreary that they just feel intimidated? Um, or is there just too much information that they're just feeling lost? So ask them what they really mean. If you want to really learn more about this uh, website, the Intimidator website personality, you need to take the quiz and we've got a ton more information for you. Uh, yeah, I think it's really easy when someone makes kind of a criticism of what you got going on. Uh, you might have spent like really painstaking months or years getting your website to the place it is. And so to hear that kind of feedback is uh, not always pleasant. So it's important to sort of like take the emotion out of it as best as you can and actually engage in the conversation because they're trying to sell you, tell you something that actually matters that could help you uh, to move forward in your sales. So it's important. Chad, what do you say to your boss when he walks in the room and says, my wife says that the website's confusing. Everyone's oh. had like that boss's wife and you're like, oh, <laughs> she has so many opinions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in my case, my boss is my wife. So, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm good to go. Right. Um, so what I would say is, well, sir, let's, let's, uh, let's dive into this and uh, let's take a look at your menu. Um, wow. There's, wow. There's a lot on here and, and a lot of it could probably be scaled back or um, completely eliminated. There's just so many options, but, it's kind of like go style machines and they're just very, they, they, they produce a line because people go in there and they say, mm, what do I want? And do I want that flavor too? And I want that added. Do I want that added. And it just, it just piles up and people don't know what to pick. Right. And uh, it's just awful. And, and Amy knows I have a personal grudge against those machines, but anyways, so, um, you know, it, it also could be, um, a little bit confusing because there's a lot of information on the website and it may be just bombarding people. It's like a used bookstore and that there may be some really good nuggets in there, some really good books, but they're just scattered everywhere. And, and some personalities want to rifle through everything, read every page that you would call a qualified lead at that point. 
but you know, if, if it takes them 30 pages before they actually get some valuable information that they need or want, that could be a sign that they, you know, your website needs, needs a, a little bit of a, a tune up um, in that regard. So, um, sir, I would, I would just recommend that we look through this and try to look at a critical eye strategically of making sure that uh, we can make it less confusing and more streamlined for our stakeholders, AKA mm -hmm. our wives. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's really awesome uh, when that kind of conversation gets started, especially with a coworker or a boss. These are the kinds of things you should know about and you should uh, take some time to think about. So it's great when you can say, you know, I noticed that as opposed to saying, what do you mean? It's confusing. I worked so hard on that, but it's like, you know, I noticed it was confusing. Let's talk about why and how we can fix it. Um, and again, while your boss's wife might have opinions that are unpopular or sometimes frustrating, I'd also be right. And so it's okay to like consider that maybe she has something good to say or he, or you know. And I, and awesome. I have real world experience. Oh, sorry, Amy. What that? Uh, so it's just the lag. It's just crazy. Um, I real world experience with this too, with, with, with unveiling videos, uh, for client approvals, you know, you, you, a lot of times they're like, oh, I don't like that part. So you had to kind of like get an emotion out of it and try to dig deep into why they didn't like it or start articulating and putting into words what is wrong with it or what could be better about it. Um, yes, so absolutely. That, that, that could be the same thing with a website. You know, there, there might be something that's off that you just can't figure out. And so um, this is us trying to kind of categorize that into mm -hmm. something that's meaningful. Yeah, absolutely. And when someone says, I don't like something or I do like something, that's not very helpful. But when they say something's intimidating or confusing, or if you can get that kind of response out of someone, then you're really getting somewhere. And that's a great conversation. If uh, Jennifer was here, she's our website therapist. If she was here, what she would say, I can quote her, she would say, <laughs> remember, don't make them think. Mm -hmm. And what she means by that is that uh, people need visual cues. They need, they need, uh, little uh, words that they recognize. So for instance, a simple example of this on a website is the word contact. If you see the word contact in a menu, you pretty much know what that means. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you take away some of those visual references or if you clutter things up to the degree that people can't navigate, then they have to process every button click. And it should mm -hmm. be much more like sitting down in your car and just driving. You shouldn't have to figure out what every single control does. Although that does happen to me when I get a new rental car that's a very new, a late model and I don't know <laughs> where the key is. But other than that, you know. <laughs> yeah, 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night in the airport rental, <laughs> trying to figure out where the key goes. <laughs> and, why, and why the car keeps stopping when I push on the back. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I anyway, feel like we haven't had this recently lately, happen. So. Yeah. Well, not recently. I mean, last year, but still. Yeah. Uh, all right. So our last repeat after me, what to ask a web design firm that you're vetting? There are some really great questions you can ask. It, there's going to be common ones you always have, like, what's it going to look like? What's it going to feel like? What pages should we have? You know, there's all that stuff. But some of that stuff is peripheral. Uh, doesn't mean you shouldn't ask it. But these are kind of the top questions we recommend you're asking. And a lot of web design firms won't know how to respond. And that is a, a big red flag. So you can ask, will my website be easy to edit without your help? Now, if you're doing WordPress, everyone's going to say, yeah, 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 WordPress is easy and they're right. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean WordPress is the right choice. Could be. There are a couple other options that are also really easy for editing, but that's an important one. Can I edit it without your help? Will it include conversion methods other than a contact form? So if you just ask if it'll include conversion methods, i.e. a way for someone to become a lead, a way for someone to give information to you so that you can contact them, um, they're going to say, yeah, yeah, I don't have conversion methods, but they might be thinking, well, it'll have a contact page or there'll be a subscribe form in the footer. Those are not what we're talking about. Those are the least used uh, forms on any website in the history of all websites. So you need to ask them, other than a contact or subscribe form, what conversion methods are going to be on my website? And if they're dumbfounded, maybe not the right firm for you. 
ask them, will it strip away unnecessary pages to provide a simple, clean experience? So you don't want your firm taking all 172 pages from your website and just putting a new face on them. That's not going to help you. Your content matters. We say content is king and the paths in which people take really are important. And so that firm should be rethinking how your site map looks and feels um, and what pages really matter. Next, you're going to ask them, will it use language that is customer focused? So again, are they going to copy and paste the language from your old website to a new website and call it a new fancy website? Um, or are they going to actually think about how things sound and what's being said and where people are clicking and why they're clicking there and so forth? Last question is, will it be built to provide value and education instead of just getting a sale? So what I mean is, will it be built for offering downloadables, free information, really great blog full of articles, not to say they have to write the articles for you, but is the website in a whole built for educating your consumer or is it just built to have people clicking all over the place to buy stuff? Um, now, if you're not, if, if you're not an e-commerce, um, you know, things get a little weird when you're talking about e-commerce because you have a lot of products on your website, but either way, the whole theos behind it should be, this is for educating and providing value before we try and make a sale. Any other questions you guys think uh, should be asked of a firm when they're being vetted? Oh, you're on mute, Dave, but I know you're trying to say something. <laughs> Still on mute, there you go. <laughs> oh, I found the mute button, just like the key in the late model car. So you should be asking people about how our how are backups managed? How is security managed? Um, how, it, how are updates managed? Because what we find in a lot of the open source um, website builders, the, the, they might be very inexpensive to start, but the load that builds up over time, so for instance, WordPress has, on average, has 24 plugins. Every one of those plugins, every time WordPress updates, which is on a regular basis, has to be updated. Otherwise, you create huge security vulnerabilities in that website and it can break. So you have to ask what's the update process, what's the load, and if, and if someone's not really ready to answer that question, they're not ready to host your website. Um, it's important that those things get taken care of and security is becoming a huge deal. So security is something you need to pay attention to as well. You should ask about it. All right, great. Well, these questions and a lot more can be answered. If you use our super fun quiz, it has cute little robots in it, these robots being your website, uh, it's a website personality quiz. We just built this resource because we thought it'd be a great way to sort of get you guys thinking about what is my website's personality? Uh, is it a champion, which is like the king of all websites? Is it a dreamer and not converting? Is it intimidating people? What's it doing and how do people feel? And what can I do about it? After that, there's a workshop you can watch if you like. It's also free. Um, so just some ways to, to try and get you guys thinking about how your website is performing. Um, so I'll include the link, but it's storycollab.com slash web personality. All right, so now Jennifer Bailey, she is off on a little mini vacation with her kids. It's super fun. She's going to join us for a second, which we so appreciate, to do ads in the wild. She had a really fun experience um, with an ad this week while she was on vacation, so she's going to tell us all about it. Hey Facebook, this is Jennifer Bailey, your web therapist here at Story Collaborative. I am on a little mini vacation and I just wanted to take a minute and record your ads in the wild segment today because it's my favorite segment and I didn't want to miss out. So I wanted to tell you about a really funny experience I had yesterday watching a commercial. Did you know that your experiences with watching ads and interacting with ads and brands is going to be much different when you're on vacation versus when you're just at home and in your day-to-day -day life. Your experience is definitely gonna be different. So that's kind of what happened to me yesterday here on vacation with a Campbell's Soup commercial. So let's stop for a moment and watch the commercial and then we'll be right back.
So there you have it. There is your Campbell's Soup Hungry commercial. Now, as you can imagine, I had just had a big day of travel and I was finally sitting down on the couch my first night here. And um, I'm watching this Campbell's Soup commercial for food, meal after meal after meal. And guess what it's telling me? It's saying hungry over and over and over again. So I'm sitting there near dinner time, having a full day of travel and I am starving. And what's happening to me every single time I see a picture of the, the food from Campbell's Soup is I'm getting hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. And you know what I wanna do? I wanna go get all the Campbell's Soup off the shelf of the grocery store and make dinner right now. That is what happened to me. But what's funny about this commercial is that it really does create a feeling and a desire in your belly for food and not just any food, but something made with Campbell's soup. So a lot of people are um, staycationing. They are at the beach vacationing. They are places that um, have a full kitchen and everybody gathers around food. So what better time to give a commercial for Campbell's soup than, uh, than, than right now during the summertime, uh, during a lot of um, people staying home, not traveling as much, or, or maybe traveling to uh, house vacations instead of big you know, island vacations, for example. So that's my Ads in the Wild segment for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Go get yourself a can of Campbell's soup and make a yummy meal. All right, bye. Thanks, Jen. That was super awesome. Campbell's soup, delicious. I haven't had it in a really long time because uh, full of sodium, but still yummy. <laughs> All right, so next term of the week. Chad, what, what is our term this week? Term of the week. The term of the week is crow. And that's C-R-O. No, you don't say crow. If you said crow, you'd get laughed out of it. Now, if you said SQL for SQL, yes, that's correct. Now, uh, C-R-O, it's conversion rate optimization. So what does that mean? So it is the kind of the process of figuring out how to improve uh, conversions. So we want we want people when they when they look at an email when they get on our website to convert. Um, so and this could be something simple as uh, changing a button color to red so it stands out to them for urgency. Could be simple as making something a little bit more clear. But there are little changes that you can make to make your um, your email your your website your landing page your CTA stand out more and actually convert somebody and that you know conversion can be a view depends on what your metrics are right could be a view it could be um, a downloadable um, that they have to trade their email off to you could be any of these things that are considered a metric that is that sh uh, basically measures your success so um, whatever you decide hey this this shows that people are converting and they're going to become uh, qualified leads then um, that is how you would optimize. Just just making little tweaks here and there. Uh, and I'm sure Amy and, and Dave have, have better insights than I do. Um, oh, that was CRO. great. I want to share. Uh, I do want to share my screen to kind of show how this works. Oh, yeah. Did you have something you wanted to add? No. Go ahead and share your screen because oh, okay. I think the screen has got some cool information on it. Yeah, so I just launched, we just started this thing called Short Stack. Um, and you guys can go get it if you want. I'll include the link. It's this really, really fun email in which um, we kind of outline some of our S Plus marketing topics for the week um, and put them in written form. And we include a link to our episode. Um, and it's just, again, it's a way, it's a resource for you guys. It, the tagline is delicious marketing knowledge quickly because you ain't got time to learn, we get it. Um, so anyway, I just sent this email out like a, an hour ago and HubSpot is so fun. Love my job. Um, I can watch in real time what's happening. I sent it to a, almost 1800 people. I'm watching in real time that the open rate has gone up to 12.5%, really great. Click rate, a little lower than I'd like to see. Um, and so- I'm gonna, an hour, Amy. I mean, we wouldn't expect no. it to be higher than that. Let's well, check tomorrow morning. Right. So that, that's what I was going to say is that this will probably get higher as, as the day goes on, right? It's only been out for an hour. Yep. Um, but here, this click map, I can watch. Um, and it, I, I, it went away because I was just looking at it. Um, here we go. So I can see that three people clicked this button, three clicked this link to a resource, 
one person clicked on this video to make it play, three people clicked on this button, two clicked on our infographic button, three on our term of the week resource, um, and three people even wanted to take our quiz. So um, now when I send out next week's email, I can sort of continue to optimize how things lay out. Should I change colors of buttons? Should I move some things up that are more important? That kind of stuff. So, um, and also you can see people will click inline links just as often, if not more often than things that look like buttons. So never forget inline links, but uh, yeah, super fun conversion optimization that we're doing on our team right now. And uh, just, to, just to note, you know, we are HubSpot fanatics um, or HubSpot Gold Solutions partners. If you're interested in exploring the tool that Amy just showed you, I just wanted to give you a clue that we have some amazing perks that you can get, um, including free trials as well as free CRM. If you talk to us before you reach out to HubSpot, uh, we can help you get access to stuff that you would not get if you don't go through a partner. So uh, don't, uh, don't bypass us, give us a shout and we'll help you save some bucks. Yeah, we want to save you money. Psst, saving money is awesome. Um, saving you bucks and getting you perks. <laughs> what we do. That's very, I don't know. That's very <laughs> So this is apparently also a HubSpot episode because uh, our five W's segment is all about something HubSpot just launched, which I'm really excited about. Um, but it's also kind of ties into our web personality conversation. So the who HubSpot, they just launched something called the CMS hub. Now they had a web build platform CMS, um, which is con means content management system, extra little term for you. They had a platform before, it was fine. Um, we've always kind of been WordPress people. We've built our sites on WordPress in the past, didn't fall in love with HubSpot CMS solution. Um, and then they launched CMS Hub and it is leaps and bounds. I am so thrilled with this launch. Um, they launched it actually in April of this year, right before all the craziness, at least in our country. Um, and our team since then has been doing some digging. We've been trying it out. We've been seeing if it's something we really can believe in. And again, I mentioned I'm a WordPress girl. Like I've been to WordPress conferences. I'm like a WordPress groupie. groupie. Um, but for me anyway, it's safe to say that the CMS hub is absolutely what I'm going to be building on from now on. I'm mm -hmm. really thrilled with it. Um, we've even transitioned our own website recently. We're in the process of doing it. If you go to our website now, you'll see that the majority of pages are on the CMS hub. Uh, so you can kind of see how that feels and looks and how does it compare to WordPress. Um, so go check that out if you, if you like. It's built to allow for speed, security, and ease of use, which are kind of like, they're kind of like the three magic things, right? Um, security is a huge issue with WordPress that we've always dealt with. And um, this sort of eliminates that. It's incredibly fast, which also is an issue that's been increasing for us in our WordPress sites. Um, as more plugins have to get added for functionality, they just get slower. And so um, apart from that, it's really easy to use. It's fun for marketers to kind of keep track of everything. So I'm totally sold on this. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll make sure to include a link so you can kind of dive in a little bit more about what the CMS Hub has. Uh, yeah, any, anything you guys want to add about this? I was just to say, you know, Amy, um, it, uh, her primary uh, training as, as a graphic designer so she does a lot of website design um, and layout of pages, organizing pages, thinking of critically about those pages. But I don't think Amy would describe herself as a website developer. She doesn't get knee deep in the code and start going through no. the lines of code, right? <laughs> I tried so, to learn code. Let well, me tell you about it. <laughs> here's what I think HubSpot's accomplished in this hub is that they have made this, and Amy could tell you, she, you know, she has to use this every day as a marketer who has design background. Um, it's supposed to be easy for her to use without requiring a developer, but it also has all kinds of really powerful tools for real life developers to use. So they both, and then the third leg of that is that it also allows IT directors for larger organizations to control the security and the access so that you kind of have the best of both worlds. Um, but I think we're actually having a really great time with it. And the pages that we're making, I would say are really beautiful as well as highly effective. So. I just yeah, say I, them. Oh, go ahead. No, go for it, Chad. 
No, the, the, the marriage of marketing and development. It's like, have you guys ever seen that gif of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Carl Weathers be like, and they're like, you know, the muscles and there's explosions, all this stuff. It's from Predator, right? It's from Predator. Awesome. Anyways. Uh, so yeah, awesome. So that's, that's kind of what I'm reminded of <laughs> because in my eighties kind of experience, but on a serious note to toot our horn, Dave and I are actually certified in CMS and Amy's certified by just doing it every day. So there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. One thing that has always been frustrating for me, at, I love HubSpot. And so having mm -hmm. sites that are not in HubSpot, it just requires like an extra step. Every time you want to get something connected, HubSpot connects to everything, mm -hmm. uh, part of the beauty of it. And it brings everything into its portal so you can see what's happening. But there's all these little extra steps when you have an external website. And so I have been overjoyed to experience having a website in HubSpot's CMS so that everything's automatically connected and I don't have to do the extra step every time I want the data to work. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm like a new HubSpot CMS evangelist. Good job, HubSpot. <laughs> a plus on your lunch. Uh, all right, our final session, our final segment rather, is it's kind of a session. It's website therapy. That's right. Now it's time for some website therapy. You know, we all look at websites sometimes and we look at them and just say to ourselves, man, that website needs help. Um, so I want to talk about a very important syndrome today that many people uh, have been have experienced. It's called the fresh off the turnip truck website syndrome. Now, uh, when you say fresh off the turnip truck, you mean that someone, you know, they have good intentions, they, they might even look good, might even look the part, but they have no clue what they are doing. Um, so sometimes this happens when folks uh, go to college and they don't have any experience yet, and they come to their first job, and they, they know some of the words, they, they look nice, and this is no, no shot against people coming out of college because you got to start somewhere. Um, but sometimes they haven't done any internships, and so they really don't know how to do anything. Um, and so, you know, we have websites like that too. So a lot of times people will get a new website, and it will be one of these fresh off the turnip truck websites. It doesn't do anything. It's got some pretty pictures, maybe has a background video, and maybe some dancing text somewhere, but it's not really set up to do its job. And so uh, you, the way to give therapy to this website is to do what Amy just said and put it on the CMS hub at HubSpot so that it will have all-in-one marketing. What you should be looking for in a website to help it out is you want to integrate it with the CRM. You want it to be able to do A-B testing of pages, uh, make sure your ads are, are converting well. You want it to have landing pages built in. You want it to have chats and chat box. You want it to track anonymous users. You want it to have smart forms. You know, the list is long. These are all the things that an experienced and healthy website is able to do. A fresh off the turnip truck website can't do any of those things. It just kind of sits there and looks good. And so that's not really going to help you to convert anybody. Um, it, you know, first impressions are very important on a website, and that is part of the work that a website does. But if that's where it stops, um, we, we can think of other examples in the workplace of, of first impressions that are very good, but there's not a lot of depth behind them. That's what's going on with these websites. So it's important to make sure that your website can actually do something when you turn it on. And I just want to point out, I mean, obviously, you know, we build uh, CMS hub websites and it's something that we're happy to sell you. Uh, but in terms of just, just like knowledge, marketing knowledge for you guys, um, the other part of this syndrome is, is about making those changes adding a CRM, you don't, you don't have to move your whole website or rebuild your whole website to help this particular problem. What's important is that your website is converting um, and that you do have opportunities for people to engage with you that don't require them to buy something from you. Um, so that's really, I think, the message that partly what we want to tell you is that, uh, is that, you know, as far as therapy goes, therapy for your website is all about making it work properly. All right. Um, well, that actually concludes our episode for today. Uh, remember, you can go to storycolab.com slash web personality if you want to take that quiz. Again, it's super fun. There's cute little robots in it. They move and stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dave, do you have anything else you wanted to add? 
Nope. I just think that it's important that we just be real with ourselves. And, you know, it's important not to, not to only believe your own press, but to <laughs> allow your customers to speak back to you about what they're really experiencing, mm -hmm. what they really want, the questions they really have. And don't just pretend that everything's okay when something might need to be changed and improved. So get on the, get on the, the growth train and, and be focused on helping make things better. That's really good advice. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. Well, remember that stories are the ultimate human technology. If you thought this was helpful, we are live on YouTube and Facebook every Thursday at noon. We'll see you then. Finger gun. Stay hydrated and stay healthy. <laughs> see you guys. Bye, guys.